Okay, let's go over some azimuth angles conversions and basically we're looking at quadrant number four right here. This is important because as we find the azimuth angles, we can more easily solve the problem instead of using it quadrant by quadrant. So in the previous example, we looked at um, equation with a calculator such as NE district or and W district in this case and what was interesting about those equations was that we had to add either a positive or a negative sign in but actually if we use the azimuth angle um, the natural kind of tendency for sine and cosine to oscillate between positive and negative will actually resolve our um, latitudes and departures to the correct sign so let's go about seeing how we can use the azimuth angle to solve these problems. So if we notice here that theta is actually the angle between the vertical and the vector. And in our previous video, we saw that NW district, we do want that angle between the vector and the vertical. Uh, but in this case, we're going to try to use the azimuth angle. And basically, the azimuth angle is... 360 minus theta. So just as an example, we can think of this theta as 45 degrees, then the azimuth angle is going to be 315 degrees. And this is interesting because as we can already tell, the departure of the angle is uh, negative or the delta x in the angle is negative. So if we take the sine of 315 degrees, we will notice that actually that is indeed a negative answer. So this is the advantage of using azimuth angles over just um, the angle with the vertical as we saw in NW dist. Okay, so we can expect something similar from quadrant three and our expectation is that the departure will be negative. And this is because basically um, it will be controlled by sine of theta and sine of 225, for example, will be negative 0.707. So that is consistent with what our expectation is. The azimuth angle will be 180 degrees, the halfway point, and then plus theta. I think one thing to note that might confuse people is that sometimes they think that the theta uh, will be formed with the horizontal that is not the case. The data here is formed with the vertical. And so what we get is a lot of times people are used to seeing the delta x written in terms of cosine, but no, the departure delta x is actually written in terms of sine. As we can see, the azimuth angle is behaving as we expected. As we go into the different quadrants, um, different components are going negative. So in this case, we have cosine of 135, and that's negative 0.707. And that means that the latitude will be negative, or the delta y will be negative. Finally, we get to the last one, the most boring one, because both of them are positive. The latitude and departure are both positive. And just as a test point, we can take the cosine and the sine of 45. They're the same thing. We get 0.707. And now we know that both of the latitude and departure are positive. All right, so let's do some example problems. I'm going to put a 10 second timer on the screen at the end of the 10 seconds. Uh, we're going to have a minute to solve these three problems. So 10 seconds starts on the clock now.
So we know they give us theta equals 45. We're going to be running program uh, azimuth and D to XY, Cartesian coordinates. This program, we do 360 minus 45 for the azimuth angle. Distance equals 1, and we get delta X point, negative 0.7. Delta y point seven. For problem number two, we rerun the program. We do three sixty minus thirty seven for the azimuth angle. Distance equals one hundred. Uh, x equals negative sixty. Y equals seventy nine point eight. We run the program for problem number three. As for the azimuth angle, we do three sixty minus sixty five. Enter. D equal to 100 again, X is negative 90, Y is 42. Okay, let's do the same thing that we did last time. I'm going to put 10 seconds on the clock, and then after 10 seconds, you're going to hear a beep, and you can uh, attempt to solve these two example problems. The hardest part about these problems is just figuring out what the azimuth angle is. It's different for every quadrant. So we go into our programs list. We run azimuth plus D, convert it to XY Cartesian. And then we can enter in the azimuth angle. In this case, it's 180 plus 45. D is equal to 1. And this is consistent. We get X is negative, Y is negative. We run this program again, azimuth D to XY Cartesian, 180 plus 37 now for the azimuth angle, the distance of 100. Now we see that X is negative 60, Y is negative 79, and this is consistent. Both are in, both are negative for this quadrant. There you have it. I hope you guys liked that video. If you thought it was helpful, like it. If not, Please leave a comment saying how I could do better. I did my best to try to inform you guys and try to entertain you guys to the end. Um, do it for the YouTube algorithm. You know, it really does help my channel out, so boost my uh, rankings. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye.